I made a simple payload dropper for my Mini 2 using the DJI remote for maximum range. Let me show you how I did it. Hi guys, it's Oli here. I hope you are having a great day. In today's video, by using these components, I'm going to show how I made a payload dropper for my Mini 2. This is the simplest method which I could come up with. I know that there are more sophisticated versions of payload droppers, but I wanted to see what is the minimum parts count which can be used and somehow achieve to drop a payload at any distance which the DJI remote can cover. You could see the parts on the screen, but I'm going to add a list also in the description box. So this is the photo diode. I just straightened the legs and soldered two wires on it in this fashion. This is going to sense the light of the front LED, which can be turned on from the remote at any point. And that is going to trigger the drop mechanism. So I'm going to just stick it on to the front LED of the drone. I'm using a black electrical tape. It's very important to isolate this uh, this uh, photodiode from the external light because due to this LED on the front of the drone is not too strong. I had to set this uh, sensing electronics circuit on the front very sensitive so external light can also trigger the drop. So to make sure that there is no light coming in to the photodiode I also put a layer of aluminium tape on this I checked uh, that uh, from behind where the gimbal is, uh, light is not getting in there, so that part is fine. But like this, and even pinching it together at the wires as you saw it earlier, and how I do it here, I can make sure that no light is getting in there. One other great thing with this mode is that it does not void warranty, because the drone is not being opened, it uh, just adds parts to it. So here is the MOSFET I'm using, gate drain and source. You can check it out how this works. I connect the 470K resistor to the MOSFET. By the way, first time uh, in history on the video, there are these uh, chapter modes, so you can check where is the part with the schematic. That schematic will look a little bit different, but if you follow everything I do, it is actually the very same thing I just made it in a way so it's easier to organize. I try to make things neat uh, with uh, this uh, heat shrink tubing because uh, this is as I told in the beginning this is a very crude way of doing this uh, payload dropper thing but my main uh, goal was to make it so that it works from the DJI remote because that range like that is really as far as the remote uh, can reach. And with the Mini 2, it's, uh, it's quite long distance. It's up to 8 kilometers, if I'm, if I'm correct about that. So one neat little trick I used to use is to put a little bit of aluminium tape on something and glue things to that so that I can remove it later. This is the cardboard I'm used to use. And uh, there I just uh, use my trusty super glue and fix this uh, little thing on place. So this is the LiPo cell I'm using as the power source for this whole uh, mod, this dropper. It's a 650 milliamp hours LiPo cell. It can be even smaller. The maximum current draw during operation with this dropper is around 200 milliamps, so it's not... Uh, too much at all. Now you see those two relatively thick gauge solid core copper wires connecting a resistor to the bottom of the drone. These uh, wires are not so thick because of the current draw. I just needed something which has some structural rigidity. So that's why I'm uh, fixing it with this captain tape to the drone because of course the payload has to be carried somewhere. And these were my choice of uh, of strength. Of course, uh, as I said in the beginning, this uh, mod is, uh, uh, can have a lot of improvements. This I understand that uh, 
it's not too easy to put on and take off of the drone it's more like a concept to see if it works at all here I connect the feedback LED on the bottom of the drone which is going to stick in the view angle of the camera when the camera is pointed totally downwards it's just a visual feedback through the screen also that the unit has operated or it's operational so here is the electronics theory and the schematics part this is a photodiode which I'm using it's a photodiode is like a normal diode it has a marking on the left you see the dot it conducts electricity one direction and not in the other direction but when it gets light on it then it starts to conduct the other way as well so in this uh, configuration I can use it as a voltage divider connecting it to the two ends of the battery pack when there is no light on the photodiode on that point in the bit in between is roughly zero volts but when light is coming on the photodiode in that point I'm getting roughly four volts these are all estimations so if I introduce a MOSFET into the circuit and I'm using that middle point as a control point to the gate of the MOSFET then I can control the flow between drain and source of the MOSFET so of course source is connected to ground that's standard fare and drain is going to be connected with the 22 ohm resistors to the power supply line what does this do when the drone LED lights up and gives light to the photodiode then the MOSFET turns on and this 22 ohm LED starts to heat up considerably not to the point of burning out but it heats up and this control LED which I put in is just a visual uh, confirmation that actually this heating cycle is happening so this is how it looks on the drone I'm gonna test it on the bench now so the drone is turning on the gimbal has a space to move from this control LED that's not a problem and now I'm turning on the front LED and the heater so to say turns on turning off the LED and the heater turns out and yes I check and that resistor is getting hot and as I said it doesn't get hot enough to the point of burning up but it is definitely hot enough you see now the heater is on and this is a stick of hot glue and now it melted that part of the hot glue now I turned off the heater so to say I'm letting it to cool off and then I can even leave the drone itself with it so 250 grams easily and that's actually kind of how much maximum additional weight this drone can carry so this is the concept that something is being fixed to this resistor with some hot glue and when I turn this on the resistor warms up the hot glue warms up and let's go the payload so as you can guess this is not an instant drop it doesn't happen instantly after me activating the LED on the remote but uh, it uh, may happen let's see so here the famous living room so I'm going to check how it goes the drone is on and the payload is just now a, like a reel of electrical tape now when I'm getting into the menu to 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 turn on this front LED I would like you to pay attention on the bottom of the drone there will be mm, very very hardly but you can see the red LED turning on so now the heater is on and then we are waiting for the drop I'm a little bit late with moving the gimbal down but there it is it dropped so that was the first test I did and then it worked now okay you might say it's it's very nice I mean I believe it is nice but uh, how can I reuse this then I need a hot glue gun and uh, or a lighter and it becomes a little bit difficult so what I'm doing here now as you see the LED is on so I turned on the heater and I'm using the same wire and the same remaining hot glue on it and I started to heat up that uh, resistor to melt the hot glue with the actual unit and it it did melt it very nice so I turned it off and wait for it to cool off and uh, there I have the payload attached again so it is easy to reattach the same thing or attach a new thing even on the field
So now you will see as I go in the menu, you can see the red LED on the corner, down corner, that it was off and now it is on. So this is a visual confirmation from distance that actually it is happening and it dropped rather fast because at this time I didn't put so much uh, hot glue on it because it was not necessary. So that also influences how fast the dropping happens. So if I would like to do it outside, I need a payload which is uh, environmentally friendly. So I use paper towel and rice and some cotton thread because this is going to be a payload which I'm not going to retrieve from far away. And I don't want to uh, yeah, strain the environment with the plastics and whatnot. So this is totally environmentally friendly. This is a fun, word to, fun way to feed the birds. So I'm outside. Here is the... The drone with the payload, it's 54 grams, as you could see, it, not much, uh, the point is not really how much it can carry, it's just to prove the concept. And then uh, now we are going to take off to the far distance. Here is your beautiful cinematic uh, view of uh, the fields coming up. I, of course, didn't want to go extreme distance. I am not comfortable with this uh, flying of uh, five, six, eight kilometers away. I don't know. I'm just not used to it. I'm into electronics. Drone flying is not my, my main hobby. So I decided that like uh, 1,200 meters could be a good distance. That's, uh, that proves that this is not one of those El Cheapo short range uh, uh, payload droppers you can find on the internet so now I'm gonna turn on the LED you can see it on the control LED in the corner that the heater is activated wait for it and there it is from over a kilometer of distance I could feed birds awesome so I turn now off the LED on the control LED, I can see that indeed it turned off. Now, if it would stay on, what would happen, right? Because there is this heat coming on the bottom of the drone. One, when the drone is airborne, there is a lot of wind to cool it. And as I said, it does not get as warm to burn the plastic. I had another version before which used a thin copper wire and just blew it instantly, but then it was molten metal, hot, and I didn't want to use that. I didn't consider it being safe, so that's why I went with this resistor hot glue combination. And as I said, on the field it is easy to re recharge, so to say, this dropper to put an other unit. I just put up another electrical tape to... Basically, I just wanted to see for myself how easy it is on the field. And then I reconnected and it worked. And yes, of course, this I retrieved because this is plastic. So that is all I have for you today, guys. I hope you like this uh, dropper video. And I have to tell you, this was like less than $10, including the battery. So it is not an expensive project. So guys, if you have anything to say or if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. Check out my other videos if you're interested in the subject. And please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.